Hi, welcome to Play With Your Food and welcome to the first episode of my fall series. So for the next two months, I will be teaching y'all a lot of comfort foods. So there's gonna be a lot of spices, a lot of casserole, sweet potato and pumpkin. Um, so that will give you a lot of ideas what to cook for Thanksgiving. So for the first recipe, we are going to make Indian curry. I know it's not very Thanksgiving, but it has a lot of spices. It's starting to get cold outside, so it's gonna definitely warm up your body. And then we are going to play with it and turn it into some sort of an Thanksgiving appetizers, and it'll just be fun. So stay tuned, come join me, and let's go ahead and play with our food. So, Indian curry. Just a complete disclaimer, it is going to be a lot of spices, which I've listed below in the description box. But I know a lot of y'all are gonna be asking, what if I cannot find this, or is it okay if I don't use this? I'm sure you can get away with it, but I believe in Indian cuisine, the curry is the heart of the dish. So whatever meat you guys are gonna be using is just gonna be secondary. This curry sauce is gonna be the one that's telling the story of the whole plate. And then second is that you definitely will be needing a blender because we're gonna be blending the curry paste. So I know it's gonna be a lot of ingredients, um, but I promise it's super, super easy. It's more of like dumping everything, a little bit of cooking technique, and then you're done. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we're gonna start this recipe by pureeing our onions, garlic, and oil. So just put them all together in the blender. And you wanna make sure that everything is completely blended and there are no chunks of onions. That way we are gonna brown this evenly. All right, so we do have our onion puree or onion smoothie, whatever this is. Um, we'll just go ahead and set this aside and then we will prepare our spices that's gonna come with our curry and then preheat our pan. All right, so I have my pan or wok preheating and have all my spices ready. We'll go ahead and render the ground beef. So at this point, you can use whichever protein you guys want. You can use chicken, pork, or lamb even. Um, and we'll just go ahead and render the fat so to get more flavor out of it. And then we will try to dry out as much liquid as we can. So once your ground beef is cooked, we are going to strain this out and we'll just transfer it in a different container and set this aside and then we will use it for later. So as you can see, I left the beef fat in the pan. Um, if you're trying to be a little healthy, you can always remove this, but if not, I always love the flavor of the beef. And we'll go in and brown our onion puree with the rest of the beef fat. And this uh, will go and take some time to brown. Um, just let it probably like around medium heat. And then we are going to add our pepper, some bay leaf, and then at this point you can add your chili. So for this one, the more you cook the chili seeds, the more spicy it will get. And I love spicy food, um, especially with curry. So you can just dump this in and we are slowly going to go ahead and cook this until you, it'll turn kind of light brown and probably it'll take about a good 20-30 minutes to do that. And then once we have achieved that light brown color, um, we are going to add the rest of our spices. So it took me actually a little bit longer to achieve this kind of color, um, but this is what you want So before you add all your spices. So I've listed all the spices below. Um, there's Again, there's gonna be a lot, but you can just dump them all in. And just another thing is that I decided not to add uh, the cloves because it's whole and I kind of don't want to fish them out in my curry. So I'll just leave that behind. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and add the, uh, the garam masala, there's ginger, there's turmeric, like the whole nine yards. If you can find all the spices, that'll be perfect. And then we'll just go ahead and mix this all together. And then you will notice it will dramatically change the color, um, especially because of the turmeric. So our curry is turning in um, a little bit darker brown now because of the spices. And now you can go in and add your tomato puree. 
So just a reminder, um, there is tomato sauce and tomato puree. Um, tomato sauce is something that's already cooked. They simmered it down with like a lot of spices. What I got is a tomato puree. You can get this at your grocery store, just make sure it's not one of those tomato sauces because it's a completely different taste. Or if you can't find any, you can always puree your own tomatoes. And then we'll just go ahead and mix this all together. And then once your tomatoes are cooked, it'll turn, turn into an amber brown color. You can add your cream. Um, usually I would use uh, yogurt, like plain white uh, yogurt. Um, however, I can't find any, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use sour cream. Um, it's not really gonna be a lot of difference really, but apparently my grocery only sells vanilla yogurt and one of those flavored ones. And we'll go ahead and mix this all together. Make sure that there are no lumps of yogurt or sour cream in your um, curry. And you can see the color is turning into a light orange. So at this point, our curry base is done. So you can now add whichever meat you want. Um, in my case, I do have ground beef. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and set this aside, and then we'll go ahead and put our ground beef back, and then we will make ground beef curry. All right, so I do have my curry base on the side, and in the same pan, we will just go ahead and saute our ground beef. So at this point, you can add whichever y'all prefer. You can saute this again with some onions, garlic, um, some more ginger, or even add some vegetables if you want some potatoes or carrots, um, whichever y'all prefer. And this is gonna be the perfect time where you can adjust the flavor. If you guys want it a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, or maybe some sugar, if you want it a little bit sweet, or maybe even spice, or you can add some more chili flakes to this. And then we are going to add our curry baits. And we'll just go ahead and mix this all together. All right, so this is the part where we are going to turn this into an appetizer so you can serve it for Thanksgiving. Well, whichever parties you guys are gonna go to. So I do have my mashed potato over here, just simple boiled, added some butter and salt and pepper. And we are going to put a good amount in our hands. It depends on how big you want your potato balls to be. And we'll just go ahead and spread it out in our palm. And then what I did with the beef is I chilled it a little bit so it's just gonna be easier to handle and it's not gonna be dripping. And we'll stuff it in the middle. And then we are going to form this into a ball. So whichever shape you guys want it to be, can it be like flat or it can be like hot dog shape, but I just prefer it like a potato ball. And then we are going to bread this. So you have your dry hand and your wet hand. So we'll go put this or drench this with some flour. So dry hand. And then off it goes to the egg. And then our wet hand. This is like one of those culinary basics that I learned when I was in school. And then off to the breadcrumbs. And then again, dry hand. Oh, making a mess. All right, so we'll just go ahead and roll this in there and then kind of want to shape it back if it needed be. And then we'll just set this aside. And we'll just pretty much repeat this until we finish all our mashed potatoes. All right, so I do have my oil preheating. And another trick, um, it's an old trick, is that the chopstick trick to know if your oil is hot enough. So when you put your chopsticks in, if there's a rapid boil in the bottom, it means your oil is pretty much ready. So we're gonna go in and get our potato balls and kind of shape it back to a little bit round. And then we are just gonna slide this in. And then you don't want to crowd your oil though, because if you put so many potato balls in at the same time, it's actually going to lower the temperature of your oil and it's going to take some time before you can actually brown your potato balls and you will end up with like a super oily potato ball. So at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and put our cook four at a time. All right, so as you can see, um, it's turning into this golden brown potato balls 
and some side I kind of burned. My bad, because I was doing some other things. But anyway, just make sure that you kind of like twirl, swirl this around. Um, just make sure that it's going to be cooked evenly. And sometimes um, while you're cooking your potato balls, it's going to pop because of the, if you put so much meat in it, but that's fine. I mean, nobody's perfect. And then we'll just go ahead and take that out. And we are going to dry this out with a paper towel. All right, so I finished my potato balls and just for personal satisfaction, we're just gonna go open one and see what it looks like. And just steaming hot curry beef potato balls. And it's just a little slice of goodness right there. All right, so there you have it, our Indian curry potato balls. So I know, again, it's a lot of spices and I hope you guys find all of them because every spice is very worth it and it just adds so much flavor to the dish. Um, and again, um, it's very versatile. You can use it to make stews, marinate, or what I did, croquettes. So I hope you guys learned and enjoyed this recipe. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in my next episode. And thank you for watching. Play with your food.